Hey Art Nerds! So in our last video I walked you through the majority of painting this grad cap cover. Today we're going to add the finishing touches. We're going to letter his name in class of. We're also going to add some highlights and outline the Gundam in this image. So if you guys have had any questions so far, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. One of the ways you can get a hold of me is through my Discord server, The Paint Box. There will be a link down in the description below. It is an art-centric server. Uh, the intention is to provide encouragement and support to fellow artists and to receive the same in return. So if you're looking for a helpful, useful, and generally kind-minded community, the paint box might be a Discord server for you. So the materials we are using today are, of course, Posca markers. I've kind of curated my selection so I have less mess on the table. In the last video, my red bullet point Posca finally bit the dust. This thing is three years old. I'm surprised it lasts it as long as it did. So you guys saw me switch over to a brush tip Posca. Don't really like these as much, but maybe it's because I don't have as many. So we are going to be using yellow, orange, white to add highlights to this. And I wish I knew where the rest of mine like this are. This is neat. It is a PN, a very fine point Posca. And the rest of mine, I have a bunch of them, kind of disappeared. They would have been super helpful in this project. Maybe I'll, I'll look for them. Maybe I'll find them later on. We are also going to continue to use the Molotov Liquid Chrome. You guys saw me use that here and there to add details. Now, it's not super chromey on paper surfaces like this, but if you put them on a sealed surface or a glossy surface, they're intensely chromey. So I really like these. We are going to do our outlining with a black bullet point Posca. Now, that's what I was talking about with this. I wish I knew where my PN tip ones were, but the Poscas kind of tore up the paper surface, which tends to catch on PN tips, so perhaps it's for the best. We have a neon yellow Zig Posterman calligraphy pen, so it's got a chisel tip. An Artline poster marker, which has got kind of a silvery blue finish to it. We've got gold and silver PN tips. We also have a bronze bullet tip. And we have metallic Posca markers. So, and then we just have like a couple of regular Poscas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on lettering this part first, and then we'll let that dry, and then we'll tighten the inks up on this. And then I'm going to seal it with a matte spray to prevent the Posca from flaking. You guys saw some of my markers are uh, kind of puddled out a little bit in the other video and that can lead to a lot of cracking so we want to seal that. Now anytime Posca layers too thickly and doesn't have adequate time to dry you can get that kind of cracking so I just want to give you guys a heads up if you're working on your own Posca products or projects at home that's something to be aware of. So let's go ahead and get started with the lettering. Okay guys, so this is what we are starting with fresh today. This is the piece that we worked on the night before. If you guys are interested in the tutorial for that, you can click the link down in the description. Unfortunately, this video does not include a step-by-step -step transcript. I do apologize. I am kind of live narrating over what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm using a really fine point white Sharpie to work on lettering class of. Those are the finest lettering, the finest examples of lettering, the smallest letters on this graduation cap. I'm also kind of selecting the colors that I want to use. Now, if you guys haven't seen my other two grad cap tutorials, you can find links to those in the description below. I highly recommend you check those out, but I am working on this to celebrate the graduation of my younger brother, Devin Hilburn. He's graduating college and we are super excited for him. And he and my mom asked if I'd be interested in decorating his graduation cap. Of course I said yes. He's a big Gundam fan, so of course I drew a Gundam, and I guess the rest explains itself. So I am lettering his name and the date, and I'm also going to be inking the Gundam today, and I am starting with a really, really light green. The camera makes it look a little bit darker than it is, and I'm basically just filling in the larger letter forms.
Once that had a chance to dry, I'm going over it again just to give it a little bit of extra opacity. Of course, I can't resist tweaking things, so you guys might see me adjust the original art here and there. So I'm painting in some blue bubbles, I guess, blue waves, blue splashes from the, uh, the water jet. Now that his name has had a chance to dry, I'm going in with a darker green color. I'm kind of doing a stripe on each side and then filling in the bottom portion. This is going to add some legibility and it's also just going to make it a more appealing piece. It's going to add to the aesthetic of the whole.
I'm using a fine tip silver Posca to letter in 2019. And I'm going to go over that later on with the Molotov marker. So the Molotov Chrome marker that's super shiny that I talk about in the video that you guys should watch. The one that came before this one. And I'm going with the fine tip because it helps me get into these smaller letter forms a little bit more easily than the very blunt tipped Molotov would. So the Molotol Chrome actually uses an alcohol solvent unlike the Molotol acrylic markers which are water based. So this can be a little bit fumey but I use it in conjunction with my water based Poscas all the time and I haven't really had any interaction problems or issues. I also sometimes use it when I'm painting my wooden charms and just like with the Poscas so long as I seal it with a good coat it's not really a problem. Now to ink this, I'm using a bullet tipped Posca black pen. I wish I knew where my fine plastic tipped uh, Posca markers were. That would work so much better for this. It would have given it so much more nuance, but I have no idea where those have wandered off to. So we're going to work with what we have. And speaking of working with what we have, this video was not sponsored by Posca. It was not sponsored by Strathmore. This video was just, I recorded it because I thought you guys might be interested in learning how to decorate your own grad caps. And I'm using the materials that I thought would work best for this. In the prior video, we talk about some of the other materials that you guys could use to create custom grad caps. So again, I highly recommend that you guys check it out. You will find links to that as well as links to the materials that I used in this tutorial down in the description below. So please check that before you guys ask me any questions because I often will answer things or kind of include additional resources in the description. So the description is a great place to be. If you guys do have any questions after checking my description and you don't have the ability to comment due to YouTube's changes, you guys can join me on my Discord server, The Paint Box. You guys will find a link down in the description below. That is an art-centric Discord community that's focused on answering art questions, getting nerdy about art supplies, and encouraging one another. So if you're a friendly person with a decent dis disposition, you can join us over on the paint box. So you guys can see I'm really just inking this, just kind of going over, tightening up the forms. I chose to ink the Gundam rather than the flames because inking the Gundam kind of pulls it away from the flames. It also adds more contrast to the Gundam, which makes it stand out from the flames a little bit more. It adds more definition. And since that's kind of the focus of this graduation cap, I thought that was really important. And it just allows me to kind of clean things up. If I inked the flames, that would flatten this image a lot. And it would also make the flames seem way less luminous.
And of course I bring out the handy dandy blotter paper and that's just to protect the image that I'm working on from the oils in my hand to prevent colors from smearing or shifting or migrating or flaking off. So it's just a cheap sheet of printer paper but it serves the job quite well. Alright, so once I finished inking, I want to add some highlights. So I've grabbed white, yellow, and orange, and I'm going to start with orange, and I'm using this to kind of indicate the lighting of the flames on the metal body of the Gundam. So I'm just adding orange here and there. I'm going to add the yellow in more places, um, specifically on the white and on the red and on the blue. I didn't want to use the orange on the lighter colors because that was going to kind of darken them more than I wanted so I want it to look like the Gundam is being lit by the flames
the really nice thing about Posca is it's very easy to correct mistakes. Just allow the area that you've messed up to dry and then you can go back over it with the color that you wish it was. So now I'm using a very fine tip white Posca to add white highlights to the metal of the Gundam's body. I'm also going to use the white Posca to add white highlights to the lettering down below. That's going to help it pop a little bit more and give it kind of a three-dimensional look. Alright guys, so we are almost finished. It has been a long journey and I want to thank you guys for joining me on it. The next step is I want to utilize a spray finish. So I have Krylon, Krylon Matte Finish here and that's going to add kind of a matte textured finish to it. I do have gloss coats that I usually use when I'm sealing my charms but those are high gloss and I don't want this hat to be high gloss. I want it to be matte. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this outside, hopefully it's not too rainy, spray it, let it dry, and then maybe do another coat. Now, I'm not going to do that on camera. You guys don't need to see how to apply matte finish. If you do, it's very, very simple. You shake it, you uncap it, you hold it upside down, you off-gas it a little bit to clear the nozzle, you hold it about a foot away, you do an even coat, you let it dry fully, you do maybe another coat, and then you're done. So, matte finish is very very easy to apply now some people spray it on their watercolors I've never done that I don't know I've sprayed um gloss finish on over Posca over charms and I've had no problems with it reactivating or running so I don't really expect to have any finish any problems with matte finish now but gosh wouldn't that really be awful <laughs> like I might cry a little bit I'd certainly have to show you guys at least as a cautionary tale in the future all right, guys, so this is the completed cover for my brother's graduation cap. It received two sprays of Krylon Matte Finish. I allowed that to dry fully in between sprays. It is kind of humid outside, so I had to bring it inside after I'd sprayed it. This is a sneak peek at what the end result is going to look like. Uh, the hole in the center, that's for the tassel. I could have gotten it smaller. I think if I were to do this again, I would try to get it so that it kind of like key slotted on. But with all the back and forth removing it, that might not have been such a good idea either. For his tassel, I want to attach like a Gundam charm or a Zaku charm, just something to kind of tie it together. Since he's got several of those that I brought to him from my various trips to Japan, I think I'll let him provide it. Although I have been looking at a Haru charm on Amazon. I might go that route. That would be pretty cute. 
so it has been sealed. What I'm going to do now, because you can see, it's kind of curvy uppy. What I want to do is I'm going to place it between some heavy objects to kind of flatten it out, let it dry like that, kind of recure. So in our final video, I will show you guys what the finished cap looks like. And if my brother is willing to model for me, maybe get some footage of him actually wearing the finished graduation cap. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining me on this adventure. I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys did too. It's always fun for me to play around with Posca markers. They're a medium that I enjoy using, but I don't use as frequently as maybe I could or maybe I should. I do try to work them in on this channel fairly frequently though. And I was really delighted. I was really touched when my brother and my mom asked me to do the image for his graduation cap. And I really... I really am very pleased with how it turned out, and I hope he likes it as much as I do. So um, if you guys have any questions, you can hit me up down in the comments below, or you can ask me them over on my art-centric Discord channel, The Paint Box. I'll put a link to that in the description. I'll also have a link to the materials that I used in this video in case you guys want to do your own graduation caps. You guys kind of saw my process. Hopefully it's not too intimidating. It seems like it might be pretty accessible. Honestly, you could just draw directly on your black paper using any colored lead that would stand out on it. So a uh, cola race might work or even Crayola color pencils. Any opaque medium is going to stand out on this black paper. So um, it really doesn't really matter what materials you choose to use because we're using a known entity as our base. And um, hopefully this will get you guys fueled up, fired up, and ready to try your own art projects. Because that's kind of the goal here at Natto Soup Studio is I want to inspire you guys to make art too. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I hope you guys will stick around and check out my upcoming video where my younger brother models his grad cap. Bye guys! <laughs>